Hello everyone. I'll be talking about the treatment of data in this video. In some uh, variation, we call this one a statistical treatment of the data or the statistical uh, tools uh, used in the treatment of uh, the data. But uh, I'll be talking about treatment of data as the term used in this video. So treatment of data, the grade point averages, uh, GPAs of their students' coursework and student teaching achievements were converted into ratings, similar to the ratings used in the entry competence and lead performance, so that all quantitative data in this study would have the same direction relative to their corresponding market shows. The conversion of GPA to percentage rating was based on the JRMSC system student's handbook and is shown in Appendix C. So you would notice that uh, if there's a document uh, and that document must be shown as part of the proposal or part of the thesis or part of the dissertation, it has to be in the appendix. So, so in this case, it is shown in Appendix C. So the same to your research proposal, if uh, you have uh, some things to be incorporated, you want them to present as evidence, then have that as part of the appendix. You're going to label it one as appendix A, appendix B, appendix C, whichever is applicable. Moreover, the qualitative description indicated in the JRMSC student's handbook was also applied to entry competence, let review achievement, and let performance. The weighted mean was used to determine the average grades and average ratings in the lead of the 2003 BSA graduates in the areas of general education, professional education, and nature field. Ranking and percentage were also utilized in this study to compare subjects, entry competence, achievement, and lead performance. The standard deviation was further used to determine the degree of homogeneity and heterogeneity of the subject's entry competence, achievement, and lead performance. Take note that in statistics, if you are going to have the weighted mean, then you are going to compute also the standard deviation. All the time, they are partners. They are couples. The standard deviation is the pair of uh, the weighted mean. The weighted mean is looking into the central location of the data, and the standard deviation is looking into the homogeneity or the heterogeneity of the data, whether the data are far to each other or close to each other. The researcher assumed that the predictor and criterion variables involved in the study have linear relationship, the simple and multiple linear correlation, as well as multiple linear regression analysis were utilized to answer the problems in this study. In my previous video, I was talking about correlational research design. And in a correlational research design, what is used there is actually correlation. And the correlation would be simple or might be multiple uh, correlation. Person product moment coefficient of correlation or the zero order correlation coefficient was used to determine the relationship between the dependent variable and each of the independent or predictor variable. So I mentioned in my previous videos, independent variable. And in here, the other term of the independent variable is predictor variable. Correlation coefficients, which can vary from negative 1.0 to 1.0, help to determine both magnitude and direction of pairwise relationships. The sign of the magnitude verifies whether the relationship is positive or negative, whereas the numerical part of the correlation indicates the magnitude of the correlation. The closer the correlation coefficient to 1.0 or negative 1.0, the stronger the relationship between the variables. The following indices were used by the researcher in interpreting the coefficients of a correlation, both simple and multiple, as suggested by Cohen way back 2001. Under correlation, when you look at the indices, we have to mention the author of uh, 
the the tool that we are using because in correlation as uh, you read from one book to another book in statistics there are many indices that's why you have to point out you have to identify which source are you using so that the reader will be guided aha uh -huh, this one is taken from that source and i'm giving you a caution that uh, there are many indices. As you move from one book in statistics to another book in statistics, or from one author of statistics book to another author, there are many indices and they vary. So according to Cohen, the correlation coefficient and then the corresponding interpretation size of correlation. Plus or minus 0 0.002 plus or minus 0 0.09 negligible correlation. So forth and so on up to plus or minus 0 0.50 to negative plus or minus 1.00 large correlation. Multiple linear regression was the major analysis used in this present study. The researcher used Cohen's criteria way back 2000 in assessing the unique contribution of the independent variables. According to Cohen, for multiple regression models in the behavioral sciences, the following guidelines should be used. Standardized beta coefficients, then effect size of the unique contribution. So we have 0.00% to 1.99% negligible. So put and so on up to 26.0% and greater large effect size of the unique contribution. The aforementioned sizes are also suggested sizes for R square and adjusted R square, according to Cohen way back 2001. The data collected for this study were encoded and analyzed using statistical package for the social sciences, SPSS version 9.0. Now we have version 23. And that uh, all statistical analysis uh, will be done through a software in which uh, we don't do manually for now. We have different software available in the market. We have the free software, and we have also a subscription of those different software. So in here, we use Microsoft Excel data analysis tool pack, and then SPSS. Again, SPSS, statistical package for the social sciences. Statistical package for the social sciences, or SPSS. So we have now version 21, we have version 22, we have version 23, the one that I know as the latest uh, version. Microsoft Excel is actually found in all of your um, all of your gadget uh, using a laptop or desktop. Mm -hmm. If you use Microsoft, you can find the Microsoft Excel data analysis uh, tool pack. So explore your uh, Gadget and then try to explore the data analysis uh, tool pack. And the statistical tests were performed at 0 0.05 level of significance. I'll be talking about the significance level, what is 0 0.05 level of significance in a, a different uh, perspective in another video. So if you look at into the entire presentation, I mentioned about simple correlation and then multiple correlation. So in a simple correlation, you look at only two variables. You correlate two variables, uh, the same to the things that I mentioned in correlational research design. So for example, you are going to correlate uh, math achievement and English achievement. Uh, so in that case, you have only two variables. Uh, so we are talking about in their simple correlation. If you look at into height, of a person and the age of the person, you correlate the two variables, then that uh, would appear as part of the simple correlation. In terms of the multiple correlation, this is a higher version of a correlational research design or uh, a complex uh, correlation in terms of statistics. You look at into the independent variables and the dependent variables or the predictor variables and then the criterion variables. You look at into many independent variables and you only have one dependent variable. 
So in this kind of presentation, there are many independent uh, variables or predictor variables. Uh, so in this case, the independent variables are the entry competence, we have the general education achievement, the professional education achievement, the let review achievement, and the student teaching achievement. So all of those five are what we call the independent or the predictor variables. The dependent variable is the actual let performance given or conducted by the Professional Regulation Commission of the Philippines or PRC. So looking into the perspective of the independent variables, there are many and there is only one dependent variable. So if that would be the case, now you correlate many independent variables as a group, and then we have one dependent variable, the correlation is what we call multiple correlation. So again, in a multiple correlation, there are many independent variables, and there's only one dependent variable. So in the presentation that I'm giving in this video, the independent variables are the entry competence. That's actually the OLSAT component. Number two is the Gen M, general education achievement. Then the professional education achievement, the major field or the field of specialization achievement. Then the student teaching achievement and then the let the review achievement. All of those are considered as the independent variables, considered as one group. And the dependent variable, there's only one, which we call the actual let performance given by the Professional Regulation Commission. So in summary, we have two types of correlation mentioned in this video, simple correlation and the multiple correlation. Thank you very much.